If you're a ChatGPT Plus user, you just lost something important. You lost the ability to choose. You lost models you relied on. And in a lot of cases, you lost hundreds of messages a day without OpenAI lowering the price by a single cent. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you exactly what changed, explain how this new router setup limits your workflow, and give you the steps you can take today to claw back some of the control before you waste money upgrading to Pro, which is what they probably want us to do anyway. Before GPT-5, Plus users could manually pick models with separate caps. If you hit a limit on one model, you switch to another and you kept working. Now a router decides which model you use. For baseline, GPT-5 chat is the new home for what used to be 4.0, 4.1, 4.5, and the 04 mini variants. GPT-5 thinking takes the place of 03, and GPT-5 Pro stands in for 03 Pro on the Pro and Team plans. There's also a mini version that isn't in the picker, ChatGPT Plus users can send up to 160 messages every three hours with GPT-5. When you hit that limit, the chat switches to a mini model until the window resets. OpenAI labels this as a temporary increase and notes it will revert to the previous limit, which is 80 messages every three hours, in the near future. On paper, that sounds simpler, but for paying users, it means less control. You can't lock a lighter mode in the beginning for easy tasks, and you can't sequence models the way you used to to stretch your runway. So just to sum that up, Plus users who are also power users are going to become very familiar with the mini version. If you're on a Plus or Team plan, you can manually select GPT-5 thinking with a cap of 200 messages per week. When you reach that cap, you'll see a pop-up and that menu option turns off. Automatic switching from GPT-5 to GPT-5 thinking does not count toward that weekly cap and GPT-5 can still switch to thinking after you've hit the 200 for the week. So that's a small caveat worth noting. It's just a matter of the user providing a prompt or a task that activates GPT-5 thinking. You could theoretically get GPT-5 thinking unlimited if you're providing the right type of prompts, but it's gonna take at least a week to see if that's actually the case. But now let's talk about an even bigger problem. This chat GPT-5 rollout has been somewhat of a train wreck because there are a lot of problems with it and they're not minor things that people should just overlook. They are major things and they're so major and you guys have been so loud and so vocal about it that Sam Altman seems to have been tweeting nonstop since Sunday. And so there are several things that he stated that they're trying to change to actually appease plus subscribers. So I want to make sure that I cover them because even though I'm covering the state of GPT-5 as it is right now and why a lot of people are upset, I also want to make sure sure that I'm giving you the most accurate and up-to-date information so that you can understand what can possibly change over the next coming weeks. One of the first things we want to look at is this tweet that Sam made on Sunday where he said, today we are significantly increasing rate limits for reasoning for chat GPT plus users and all model class limits will shortly be higher than they were before GPT-5. We will also shortly make UI changes to indicate which model is working. Now, let me say this before I show you what the rate limit is. I don't know if he's talking about the temporary rate limit increase, which will decrease in the coming weeks, or if he's talking about making this the standard rate limit increase. But someone actually commented on this tweet and asked him, well, what are you talking about? How many GPT-5 queries do we plus users get and what reasoning level? And Sam Altman replied, trying 3000 per week now. I'm not so certain that that's not a typo because currently you get 200 chat GPT-5 thinking queries. And so 300 thinking queries was something that I thought might be a reasonable concession for the plus plan. If it's 3000, as someone pointed out, then that completely does away with the need for an actual pro subscription because that's the main selling point of the pro plan. You get unlimited O3 model queries. And so unless the chat GPT-5 pro model is that much better than the chat GPT-5 thinking model, a lot of people may cancel their pro subscriptions. So I personally think that 3000 is a typo or he's being sarcastic. 
because I really believe that 300 would be more reasonable. That's what I would expect from them. But something else that he tweeted on Sunday is tomorrow or Tuesday, we expect to share our thinking on how we are going to make capacity trade-offs over the coming months. For example, chat GPT versus the API, existing users versus new ones, research versus product, etc. because a lot more people are using chat GPT and they don't necessarily have the infrastructure or the runway that companies like Google and Apple have. We can definitely expect to hear some changes probably the same day that you're watching this video because today is Monday and this video should be released tomorrow morning, Tuesday. So you should be hearing some news from them to the same day you're seeing this video or soon afterwards. The GPT-5 rollout has been completed for all Plus users according to Sam Altman, but one thing I will note right now that it's technically completed. The advanced voice mode rollout has not been completed for Plus users because I tried to use voice mode earlier and I actually actually ended up using standard voice mode again, but with this new GPT-5 rollout, I was under the impression that voice mode has been updated and changed and that it was available now. Now, I will make this kind of detour right here, this segue to mention this about the new ChatGPT-5 rollout because I don't think it's getting enough attention. The update that they've made to advanced voice mode is something that actually deserves more attention because I think it's where a lot of their resources are actually going towards providing more people with that personal experience. Before ChatGPT-5 advanced voice mode, or I think it's going to be called ChatGPT voice, there was advanced voice mode and standard voice mode. And during that era that we just left about a week ago, I actually prefer standard voice mode over advanced voice mode because advanced voice mode could only search the internet, but it could not do the things that standard voice mode could do with the advanced data analysis tools. So for instance, I like to vibe prompt. I'm prompting, I'm talking to chat GPT, but inside of my projects, I have frameworks. And so I can speak with the project and build out complete frameworks frameworks and products and pieces of content and things like that without having to sit down in my laptop because it has all of the different frameworks that it needs to do its work right there in the project files. And it worked perfectly with standard voice mode because standard voice mode had access to those tools and capabilities, but advanced voice mode did not because there was a trade off with resources to make it sound more personal. But now based on all of my research and based on all of my queries, advanced voice mode can also handle those tools just like standard voice mode could too. So now you not only have the ability to have that more personal conversation and the ability to chime in in the middle of a sentence and say something and redirect the conversation when you want to, but you also have the ability to access different tools that were previously only reserved for the standard voice mode. And as if that wasn't enough, what they've also done with chat GPT voice, I believe what it's going to be called is something I've noticed. Let me know if I'm off here or not, or if you've noticed the same thing is that it's slightly more difficult to interrupt it than it was before. With advanced voice mode, you could cough or your kid could be in the background crying or anything could be going on. And it would immediately say, oh, thank you. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Let's work on that now. And it's like, no, that was just me sneezing or coughing. And so for myself personally, I'm finding that now it's not picking up those unintentional sounds. And I actually have to be more direct and actually to interrupt it, which is something that I actually enjoy about it. And I look forward to using advanced voice mode a lot in the near future. And just to show you what I'm talking about, I'm inside of a new chat GPT chat. I'm just going to put it on chat GPT five, and then I'm going to hit the use voice mode button. And I want you to watch which model comes up. Advanced voice is now chat GPT voice. So let's see if I have access to it. So I have access to it, but earlier I did not have access to it and it had to reset at 420 PM. And I'll probably put a screenshot of that on the screen if I still have it. Uh, so I actually found the video where I did a screen recording from 8 11, 2025. That's the day 8 17 AM this morning. And so I was actually screen recording for like an hour. So here I am with standard voice mode. Let me just back up a little bit and see if I can find where it actually cut off or it went from advanced voice mode to standard right here. And so you can see right here that I had five minutes left. See if I can back up again and pull the blurb up. Let me move this out of the way. 
All right, and so you can see right here that it says 40 voice limit reach. You've hit your daily voice limit with GPT 40. Voice mode will temporarily use GPT 40 mini until your limit resets at 420 p.m. And so continue with 40 mini, upgrade to pro. But right here, I clicked on continue with 40 mini and you can see that standard voice mode is what has been inactivated. You can look right there on the screen and see it for yourself. And so either my account was just upgraded tonight or because it's 7 40 PM and my minutes reset, I'm now back within the good graces of open AI. But even so for them to say that they're rolling out unlimited access to voice mode. And then for me to see any message about limits, after using it for maybe an hour or two the day before, is just completely mind blowing to me. And I'm really confused about the usage limits. I don't even wanna say that I'm confused about the usage limits. I'm just not sure that I'm actually hitting the usage limits or that I'm actually getting what I'm paying for right now. I'll see how this goes in a couple of days. And the last thing that Sam tweeted on Sunday evening is we are considering giving a very small number of GPT-5 Pro queries each month to plus subscribers so they can try it out. I like it too. But yeah, if you wanna pay us 1,000 a month for two times the input tokens, feels like we should find a way to make that happen. Because this guy said, GPT-5 Pro is ridiculously good and I pay $1,000 a month for it if you 2x the limit on input tokens for it. And so I believe what he's talking about with input tokens is context window. And everyone throughout all of these tweets that Sam has been talking about as far as like increasing the message limits and allowing people to message chat GPT more, what they've consistently said is we want a larger context window like claude has several hundred thousand context window gemini has a one million token context window and for sure the further you get along that conversation you can have some hallucinations but o3 definitely had a larger than thirty-two thousand context window that's just something that i can tell you from experience from usage and other people in the community have tested it they found it to be about sixty-four thousand. i believe that that is fairly accurate because i've consistently seen the message where my messages are too long and I have not seen that in months. So what people really want is a larger context window and maybe a small increase from 200 to 300 GPT-5 thinking messages. And the only moment that he chooses to even address the context window issue is when someone offers to pay five times as much as they're already paying a month for ChatGPT Pro if they had a context window that was twice the size of what they already have, which is 128,000. So this person is effectively saying, I'd pay OpenAI a thousand dollars a month if I had a context window of 256,000 tokens. And to that person, I would just say, use Claude or Gemini instead of giving them bad ideas, but to each his own. And one last thing that I do want to cover before I actually end this video is this website right here. So one thing that Sam tweeted on Friday when they began to roll out GPT-5 is that a lot of people were saying that they prefer 4.0 to GPT-5. And so he says that people have very different opinions about it, etc. He said, this is a cool thing you can try. So the link opens up to this tweet and it says, some of you asked me about my blind test so I created a quick website for y'all to test 4.0 against 5 yourself both have the same system message to give short outputs without formatting because else it's too easy to see which one is which when you come to this website you can choose to try the experiment 4.0 versus 5 or you can rank models and I just choose to do this one right here where you rank the models and so this is a blind test of 4.0 versus 5 but it's not the thinking model model it's just the basic chat models and so you can choose how many questions you want to answer you can go with 20 you can go to 30 or you can bring it all the way down to 10 hit start and then here's a prompt how do I prepare for a negotiation when I have a little leverage and so you read the responses and you choose option a or option B what I want you to do is just go to the website try it for yourself just choose the 10 try it for yourself and when you get to the end of it, it's going to show you how many times you prefer ChatGPT 5 over ChatGPT 4.0. And this is the best way because many times we're attached to the old way of something and the new way is actually better.
And so this is just a quick way for you to find out if maybe you are being a little biased against ChatGPT5 and you haven't given it a chance yet. But either way, let me know what you guys think in the comments about the context window and about the rate limits increase. Do you think it's 3000 or do you think it's probably 300 a week? Also, do you think that this is something they're going to temporarily do or do you think this is going to be a permanent change? And also, if they've made any announcements today, let me know about them in the comments so I can check them out but I hope you got value out of the video. If you have, leave a like so it helps me with the algorithm and more people can see this video. And as always, take care, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one.